2004 GMC Sierra 2500. I'm gonna do a video on how to replace the lower ball joint. So since I'll be doing both sides, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the skid plate. Uh, that way we can get our jack right underneath the uh, frame here. Um, so you got four 15 millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and remove those. And then sometimes this uh, upper radiator hose will have a clip on here, which goes through here, but this one's uh, missing as you can see. So now that gives us a little better access. We can get our jack right underneath here. That way we can uh, put jack stands on both sides. Next, go ahead and grab a couple jack stands. You can see I already got my other side set up. I'm gonna go right underneath the frame rail here. And then you go ahead and lower it. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the center cap. So grab a 7 8 or a 22 millimeter and just lightly take these off. They're just plastic. Then go ahead and remove your lug nuts. Next, grab a flathead and a hammer. And let's go ahead and pop off this uh, cover here, just a dust shield, so we can gain access to our axle nut. Just kind of get behind it there. And you can twist your screwdriver, pop that off. like that and then grab a 36 millimeter let's go ahead and remove this uh, axle nut i'm going to be using my impact if you don't have an impact you can have somebody hold the brake pedal down as you uh, twist this off and you got your thrust washer here remove that next grab a pair of needle nose pliers and let's go ahead and release this uh, abs line from the brake bracket here brake line bracket let's just kind of squeeze it Pull that out like that. Grab a 10 millimeter, go ahead and remove this bolt. Grab a 21 millimeter. Let's go ahead and pull off the uh, tie rod end nut there. Grab a mini sledgehammer or something. We're gonna hit right here on the knuckle so we can release that uh, tie rod in there. And then I'll kind of just press down as I'm doing that you see that kind of breaks free there and then I will be replacing this I'm gonna do a separate video on that but I'll be replacing the outer and plus the inner so get that out of the way Next, go ahead and turn this, and we're going to remove the uh, caliper uh, bracket bolts here, which are going to be 21 millimeter. So you got one here, and then one down below there. Then you go ahead and slide your caliper off with your bracket here, and then I'm just going to kind of set this up here for right now. Just want to make sure that ain't going to fall and you're not putting too much stress on these brake lines. So just like that for now, until we can get this uh, ABS line out of here. Then you go ahead and remove your rotor. Then grab a five millimeter Allen. Let's go ahead and remove the uh, ABS sensor there. Kind of get that broken free. And then you can twist that out of there. And then I'm just going to blow that because you don't want any of that dust dirt get in there. And then just pull that out of there. Like that. And then you can feed this through here. Just like that. And then up. And then you kind of just tuck it away back there for right now. And then I just went ahead and I just grabbed the bucket. That's easier because that caliper and bracket's pretty heavy. And a bungee cord doesn't hold that up too well. So just go ahead and get a bucket or something to set that on. And like I said, just make sure you're not putting a bunch of stress on this line here. Next, we need to uh, separate the upper control arm and ball joint from the steering knuckle. Um, I replaced these not too long ago. I did a video on that. So you guys can check that out if you're interested on that. So I'll just take my cotter key here. Bend that upward. 
And then we'll see if we can just slide it out. Grab a pair of pliers. And then grab an 18 millimeter. Let's go ahead and uh, loosen up this castle nut here. Get that loose, but don't take it off all the way. So I'll go to about right there. Now we can go ahead and uh, separate that. So I'm gonna use a mini sledge here. We'll smack right here on the uh, steering knuckle. And this will probably spring up this whole control arm here. So watch yourself. Okay. Just like that. Next, grab a 24 millimeter. Let's go ahead and loosen this uh, lower ball joint nut here. We'll do like we did up top there on the upper ball joint, just kind of loosen it, uh, but not fully take it off. It's probably about like that. So next we need to uh, separate the lower ball joint from the steering knuckle. It's pretty much impossible to do that just by hitting the knuckle like we did on the upper ball joint. So you're gonna use, I'm actually gonna use a um, pickle fork. I got this set just from uh, Harbor Freight but you can rent these actually from the auto parts stores and then get your money back. But you can see we've got a bunch of different sizes here. So let's go ahead and uh, start separating that. So what you wanna do is grab your pickle fork here and you can see it's kind of uh, raised on one end so it kind of goes up. So what you do is you stick that in there and then you'll hit with your hammer here on the end, forcing that in there and that'll help separate it. Um, and then this will kind of drop down. That's why we leave that on there. So let's go ahead and might take you a while to do this. And then uh, you also probably have grease coming out of this uh, boot here as well. So it's probably gonna make a mess. So just go ahead and start hammering that until we uh, can separate that. And I'm gonna try uh, the inch and an eighth. Um, I may have to switch that up. Let's go ahead and try that one first. Let's see, it takes a while because uh, those are in there really, really tight, so. Let's just keep trying this. And actually, let me move my camera here so I don't hit it with my hammer. I got a little movement here. There we go. You can see it's separated there. And the uh, size I used was the uh, one inch and an eighth. So now we can go ahead and remove this the rest of the way. So next I'm gonna take my jack and I'm just gonna jack up underneath the control arm here. That'll raise this up. That'll take some pressure off that upper ball joint. And then we should be able to uh, take that castle nut off. And then hopefully this will kind of drop down and uh, we can slide our CV axle out of here and our knuckle out. So I'll just go right here on the corner and then just kind of jack this up some. It's about like that. Grab your 18 millimeter and you should be able to twist this off some now. Now I'll slowly lower this, kind of holding on to your knuckle here as well. You see that kind of drops down. Get your ball joint, upper ball joint out of here. And seems like that kind of stuck in there. You grab a hammer here. that kind of separated there push in on your axle here Doesn't want to 
separate from there. See if I can take a pry bar. There we go. That was just getting stuck. Drops down. So next I'm gonna get this axle out of the way. That way we got room to remove this ball joint. And I think we can, I'm gonna to try to get it up past the uh, sway bar link here and then we'll bungee it up out of the way. So just kind of move your upper ball joint out of the way there. Just kind of get it past that point, just like that. And I don't think we need to bungee it. I think it'll be out of the way. Next, I'm gonna take a, just a flat screwdriver, clean up all around this. You can see it's just built up with dirt and grease over the years. All right, so I went ahead and rented this uh, kit here from my local O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's uh, the EverTough 67045 ball joint press. Um, when I was there, they asked me if I needed the extra adapter set as well. I guess they have two different sets that has different adapters and everything you can use. I figured I probably didn't need it. I thought this had everything I needed, but come to find out it doesn't. So you can see this is the smallest one, and this will not fit inside this ball joint so we can press that out of there um and this is the smallest one so i probably should have rented one of them kits but i don't really feel like going back out and going to my o'reilly so i think what i'm going to do let's just try hitting this out with a hammer it's probably going to take a little bit and also a socket so i'll find a socket that fits in here and then we'll start hammering this out of here and hopefully that works because i think this will this will work for when we go to uh install and press in the new one just won't work for uh, removing it so i'm just going to start beating on this with a hammer or sledgehammer try not to tear up the knuckle here just try to hit on the uh, ball joint and then once that kind of starts moving i've got this uh, 36 millimeter same socket i use for the axle nut and you can see this fits in there just perfect so if i need to use this to kind of hammer down on it hopefully i don't break it but hopefully this will help uh push that down out of there. So let's go ahead and try that. You can kind of see it's already starting to come out of there. Got a little gap here. So let's go ahead and keep doing that. Once I get to a certain point, I'll use my socket. Just like that. There's what that looks like. As you can see, you don't really need any special tools to remove it. Comes out just fine with a uh, hammer and a 36 millimeter socket. So now I'm just gonna take a wire brush and clean some of that rust and everything that's out along here. So I went ahead and went with the, uh, it's the Moog ball joint. It's gonna be part number K6693. I uh, got this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description for it. And uh, just take it out of the box here. You can compare it to your old one here. You can see that's going to match up. Also the top there. Looks like that's going to work. If you take a look at our old one here, you can see that just, it just flops around. Whereas the new one here, I can barely move it. You got to use pressure to really move it. And then it also comes with a uh, Newcastle nut, cotter key, and then also a grease fitting as well. And for that grease fitting, if you take a look at your lower control arm here, you'll see you got this little notch right here, and that is for your grease cert. So if you put this up in here, grease cert is going to be right here. So it's going to kind of point out that way. Uh, that gives you a little room to uh, get your uh, grease gun on there. So now go ahead and grab your uh, ball joint press kit here, along with your ball joint. And you're going to want to use this middle adapter here. Because you see that's going to fit perfectly on the bottom of the ball joint there. And uh, you want to use this piece here. This is going to go on the bottom and you'll want the lettering to face uh, inward 
So it's gonna sit in there like that. And then this will go up in here. Again, make sure your uh, greaser is gonna be lined correctly with this indentation. And then what you wanna do, you can see this piece has threads on one side and one side it's open. So you want the threads on the top. You can go ahead and thread this in few threads here and the way this is going to go so the ball is going to be pressed up in there like that this is going to sit down in here just like that and then we'll take this other piece here and you want the probably going to want the lettering facing down on this because this if we flip this over this is going to sit inside that hole there and that'll probably hit on the ball joint once it's trying to come up. So put that side like that. But before we do that, let's just kind of get it set in here because you want this to press up in there somewhat evenly. And if, if you guys get the greaser off, you could always tap this back out and re-press uh, it in. But let's try to get it the first time here correctly. So I'm going to go probably about Probably about like that. So just kind of set that in there. Can't really get it started, but you can get it centered the way you want it. So I'm gonna say probably about like that. And then uh, go ahead and set this on here. Get this in place. Hold that on the bottom there, and then you can tighten this by hand. Just try to get this uh, somewhat tight. So probably about like that. You can kind of turn this. So I'm thinking about just like that, that should work. Then go ahead and grab your uh, 7 8 or your 22 millimeter. Let's go ahead and start cranking this. I'm gonna do it by hand for right now. Just wanna make sure that's gonna go up in there evenly. like we're okay there so let me uh, let me grab a breaker bar and make this a little bit easier so then just keep going until you're about uh, flush there or it won't go no more you can see we're uh, lined up right there let me just try going a little bit more so i think we're good there so then we can go ahead and release this pull these off of here Here's a closer look you can see we're all the way in there and if you take a look at the gap here you can see we're pressed up all the way in so that should be good like that next you can take a 5 16 wrench and let's go ahead and get this grief zerk that they provide you with go ahead and get that started in there and you can see Kind of over a little bit um, towards the outside. I probably could have went in a little bit more, but that should still be uh, fine just like that. So now you can go ahead and uh, release your CV axle here. Get that coming down there like that. Uh, get your knuckle ready here. I went ahead and just kind of cleaned it up some. Get all that grease out of there. 
and uh, let's go ahead and install this. Uh, we'll get it up underneath the lower ball joint there. I got my castle nut ready here, and uh, we'll go ahead and slide the axle shaft through the hub assembly, and then I'll probably get my jack under here again. We'll jack it up so we can get our upper ball joint in place. Let's move this like that. Go ahead and slide that through. Get it down underneath the ball joint. Get your uh, castle nut started on there. Jack here. And again, I'll just go underneath the uh, control arm here. And just kind of jack that up a little bit here. Get your uh, upper ball joint here ready. this up a little more so now we're sitting up in that so grab that castle nut and that washer and get that started on there just like that Next, grab your uh, axle nut here with your washer. Go ahead and get that on there. And if that's not all the way through, once we start tightening it, it'll pull it through. So I'm just gonna go ahead and zap this on with my impact and 36 millimeter. We'll do the final torque at the end. Grab your 7 eighths or 22 millimeter. Go ahead and tighten up the lower castle nut here. Grab my torque wrench and you'll want to torque that to 74 foot pounds. And then it's hard to tell, but you'll want to stick your cotter key through, but the uh, nut is in the way here, so we're going to have to tighten it up just a little more. That way we can get one of these openings right here. You never want to loosen these again. Uh, you want to go tighten as much as you have to to get the uh, cotter key through here. And it looks like I still need to go a little more here. So you can see the hole there. So if you can get that through. Tighten that up a little more. Still doesn't want to go through there. Let me see if I can tap it with a hammer here. And then you can just bend the tab down here like this. And same with this one. Just something kind of like that. Then do the same in your upper ball joint. Tighten that up the rest of the way. And then you'll torque that one to 37 foot pounds. Then grab your cotter key, 
and uh, go ahead and stick that through. Same thing, just bend that down. Just kind of like that. Then you can go ahead and lower your jack here. Next, grab your grease gun. Let's go ahead and shoot some grease into the lower ball joint here. Find belt right there, like that. And then just take your rag, clean all this extra grease up here, because if not, it'll just collect dirt and everything else. And you can go ahead and do the same thing. Go ahead and do the same thing to your upper ball joint. I'll say probably about right there. So now I'm going to take my caliper and bracket and just kind of set this up here because this ABS sensor needs to go through this. So kind of like that. Now we'll go ahead and do our ABS sensor here. So what you want to do, just make sure this uh, magnet on here is clean. There's no metal shavings or anything on it. Make sure that's nice and clean. And again, this feeds through here. And then you can go ahead and pop that in place. Grab your five millimeter Allen screw here. That started in there and go ahead and tighten that down. And then you go ahead and grab your rotor, get that back in place. And I like to just take one lug nut here, screw that on all the way just to hold that rotor in place so it's not sitting there moving back and forth on you. Grab a rag and some brake clean. Just gonna make sure this rotor is nice and clean since we were dealing with a lot of grease. Then go ahead and grab your caliper with your caliper bracket. Let's get that back in place here. You may have to adjust your pads if they moved on you. ready get those started grab your 21 mil go ahead and tighten those grab your torque wrench and you're going to tighten those to 128 foot pounds. Get your brake line bracket in place here. Got that little dowel goes in that hole. A 10 millimeter bolt. Tighten that down. And then you can go ahead and stick this back in here. Next, grab your tie rod in. Like I said, I'm gonna be replacing this. I'm gonna do a whole separate video on that. But for right now, we'll put it back. Just kind of get that up in place. Grab your nut here. Yeah, you can see that's just going to turn on me. So 
if that starts turning on you, you can take a pair of vice grips here. Just kind of squeeze these on here just to hold that in place, keep it from spinning. Grab your 21 mil. Go ahead and tighten that down. Grab your torque wrench, torque that down to 48 foot pounds. So if I wasn't going to uh, replace this tie rod end, I would go ahead and uh, shoot some grease in that as well. So that's going to be pretty much it. Um, we still need to tighten up the axle nut, torque that down, and then put our cover on. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, passenger side lower ball joint here real quick, and then I'll come back. All right, so as you can see, you got this side on as well, the passenger. And uh, here's this old ball joint. So it's pretty much, pretty much the same thing as the uh, driver's side there just uh, totally worn out. So let's go ahead and uh, get the driver tire on and we'll go ahead and uh, torque both of our axle nuts. And I'm still gonna wait to get the dust cover on there. Um, that way we can lower this to the ground without this turning on us and we can torque that. Grab your torque wrench and we'll torque the axle nuts to uh, 177 foot pounds. Grab your dust cover, go ahead and set that in place. Then you can grab a flat head and then just kind of tap on it with a hammer. Then you go ahead and torque all your lug nuts to 140 foot pounds. Grab your center cap, and I like to just do these by hand so I don't break them. And then lastly, go ahead and grab your skid plate. Let's get that back in place. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the video. Again, this was a 2004 GMC Sierra 2500. Went ahead and replaced uh, both lower ball joints. So hopefully this video will help you out. If it does, why don't you subscribe to the channel, check out my other videos. I got quite a few on this truck that I'll be doing. So check those out once they're uploaded and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.